This black walnut is taking up the light layer to the north. It's shading beyond it, but inside it, towards the south, other things can grow, shorter things. So underneath the black walnut, we have plum trees, kiwis, elderberries and lilacs, Jerusalem artichokes, and then currants. Ha! So all have a niche within this really quite small area. They all have their spot. They're all getting plenty of sun, plenty of water, and they're protected by their taller brothers. Now, Dave, this, this beautiful hanging out area is not just aesthetics. I mean, there's all kinds of functions going on here, right? We set it all up so that there's a path to come in, lots of places to sit, and fruit trees to shade you. And an enormous amount of fruit trees just in a small area. We only have about 20 to 30 feet here. Yeah. People would think, I have to plant one bush here, then go 10 feet or 20 and plant another. But here's what we've done. Black walnut all the way up there, taking the light layer of the top. And you said something about a kiwi? We're growing northern hardy kiwis here. I got to taste one. All this growth. Looking for a soft one, because those are the ones that are ripe. Look at them all. Here, why don't you try one? Thank you very much. No fuzz. Right. So you just pop it in your mouth. Mmm. Mmm. Mm. And you said, sure enough, if you look inside, it's exactly a little kiwi. Literally, a kiwi. Who knew, eh? In northern Vermont. I love the idea that, you know, this could be overhead on your deck, giving you shade and moisture and wonderful fruit. That's right. A lot of people have a patio or, or a, uh, a deck, and it's too sunny by their house. So this is something that grows up. It grows up in just three or four years. It can grow way up, shade, and give you fruit. Well, I bet you kids love this. It makes a great living playhouse for kids. Plus, they have their own snacks. <laughs> yeah. I got to figure out how to get this on my design. We'll help you. I love we're walking along this garden path. And it's, again, the, the design elements, fall color you know, fruit hanging at, uh, at arm's reach. Amazing. And then here's where you have literally thousands of baby apple trees getting ready to conquer the world. That's right, this is where they start. Let's say we wanna make one of these Connell red fruit trees. We take a cutting from it on snowshoes in the spring, graft it onto a seedling. That little piece right there, that is the graft, dip it in beeswax that's grown this much so far, and hopefully someday it'll be a whole big tree fruiting. For a hundreds of years later. Hundreds of years, and your friends, and when you're old, and your children and your grandchildren can all be eating from that fruit. And I gotta tip my hat off to you, Dave, because I know that these are not just random seedlings. This is this man's life work, 27 years of choosing the cream of the crop and carefully propagating these exact species that are guaranteed to grow and be here in 100, 200, 300 years, who knows? So people at home, we ask ourselves, what can I do? Well, you can begin by planting productive landscapes on your own property while encouraging your neighbors to do the same. Realize that your actions on a very small scale are the foundation for complex global solutions. When's the best time for someone to plant a, a tree? The best time to plant a tree is when you're thinking about it. <sighs> What's that quote you had? Uh, on our catalog a couple of years ago, we said, the best time to plant a tree was 20 years ago. The second best time is today. <laughs> awesome. Permaculture systems rely on knowing where, when, and how to plant productive perennial species, the ones that keep coming back every spring. We rely on people like Dave as the source for these plants and for their expert advice based on years of hard-earned experience. The good news these days is that for every David Freed, there are a dozen budding permaculturalists learning how to make their own unique impact on ever-evolving earth-friendly land practices. We don't yet know what goes well with what. So I'm learning that this is not working, and man, that nectarine and all that is going crazy over here. Nuts are doing fantastic. So I know what else to start planting and what works in this soil. A visiting permaculture class from Yestramoral School lends hope that the next generation and those beyond will increasingly apply proven new systems of natural management to make a difference in the health, versatility, and productivity of our immediate landscapes.
Could you imagine just taking the time, for a typical homeowner, just to do the simple exercise of putting in a visual place where the wind and sun and water and energies are coming from, where are the views, and to just sketch out ever so simply this notion of zones. Do you know how far ahead of typical design you are just with this? Permaculture is looking at how can we live holistically? How can we live in a way that's ecologically intelligent? How can we live in balance with, in harmony with, and increase the fertility of what it is we depend upon for our sustenance? In other words, permaculture is about the home. How can we make the home place, the home space, something that is sacred, something that is meaningful, not something that we have sterilized and turned into a reduced quantified thing, but something that we see as an essential part of what is possible for ourselves to live, what makes it possible for future generations to have a good quality of life. Those are all concerns of permaculture. Permaculture's holistic perspective offers us a new way to look at landscaping and so much more. It is but one of a growing number of sustainable living models available to those of us who long to make a difference. I think the world is looking forward to a future, a nice future. And I think as, a, as an experiment, humanity has taken it itself right to the brink, where we have a choice to make. The people involved with green sustainability are looking for how do we evolve the planet and help to evolve the planet in a way that creates a positive, lasting future for us and all of the other living systems on the planet. Had a little nibble off this beautiful blue flower from the borage plant. Celtic warriors used to eat it before battle, said it gave them courage. We need courage these days, don't we, as we begin to understand the big picture. The fact that we're facing the first civilization scale crisis humanity has ever known. Interestingly though, the problem is not what we're being told in the media. From the permaculture perspective, out of all the problems we're facing, the top three, number three is exponential population growth. We need to begin having that conversation. Number two is deforestation and the role it plays in climate change. With everyone focused on emissions and transportation, we neglect the role functioning ecosystems and natural capital have in mitigating the damage. The number one problem we're facing, which isn't even on the radar screen of most people, is the loss of our soils what Thomas Jefferson refers to as the foundations of our civilization. Or as permaculture founder Bill Mollison says so well, no culture can survive without a sustainable source of food and a land use ethic. Hence the need for a permanent agriculture that actually repairs, restores, and regenerates soil and natural systems. And in a very real sense, that is the intention behind permaculture and everything I'm doing here on the ground. Now folks, I know that's a lot of information, hopefully very hopeful information. And I realize we haven't even gone into the house yet. Well, that'll be next time on Regeneration, the art of sustainable living.